I have a confession to make. The main reason I decided to write this tutorial is because I've been working lightly with JavaScript since its earliest days, extensively with it for about 12 years, and principally as a JS programmer for at least the last 8 years. And I really had no idea how event propagation works. So I figured it was time to learn, and time to teach any of you who are in the same boat. Let's talk about event listeners, or handlers. We covered how to write one in JS Quick Hits 57, and it's very possible to go for years, as I have, without really knowing more than that. You write a handler, it handles the event, and all's well. Still, I really, really don't like existing in a I know it works, but I don't know how it works state. So let's fix that. When you generate an event on an element, for our examples we're going to use clicking on it, which generates the unsurprisingly named click event, you actually generate that event on every single container element. So let's say you've got this simple HTML. If you click on that button, the click event will also propagate to the parent div, and the body, and the entire HTML document, because all of those tags contain the button. Note, the event will not be propagated to the head or title tags, because although they're contained in body, they do not contain the button. You work from the bottom up and don't go back down in other branches of the DOM tree. The reason JavaScript does this is because it allows you to assign event handlers to every level of the tree. You can catch the click on the button and the click on the body and do different things with them. Let's add some JavaScript to this code. Save that, and refresh. So the first thing we're doing is waiting for the DOM to be fully loaded, since it's hard to assign event listeners to elements that haven't been created yet. Then we assign event listeners to the button and to the body. If you click the button, both events fire because of event propagation. If you click outside of the button, you just get the body event. We could assign a handler for the div tag too, but I think you get the idea. Let's see how it works. There's both. There's just the body. So, how does all this work? Well, it's a multi-phase process. Today we're going to cover the first phase, and then we're going to cover the other two next week. There are three total phases of event propagation. Capturing, target, and bubbling. Each phase is different, and each phase can be leveraged depending on what you're trying to do with your event listeners. Capturing comes first, although when you write event listeners like the ones we wrote before, you're basically ignoring this phase. During the capturing phase, the JavaScript engine starts at the top element, so in this case our HTML tag, and works its way down to the target, producing a tree like this. Observant viewers may have noticed that when we did our click test, the button click was logged before the body click. That seems weird, right, since the body element is actually captured before the button. That's because there's a secret third parameter in event listeners. Normally we just write them like this. The optional third parameter is a boolean, and if it's not provided, it defaults to false. If we intentionally set it to true, however, that tells the event listener to fire during the capturing phase. In fact, let's go ahead and do that with the body listener. Like this. First we have to get rid of this. Just add true there. Go ahead and save that. Run the code again. Again, note, button first, body second. Refresh, click again, body first, button second. That's because the listener is running during the capturing phase, which, again, starts at the top layer and moves deeper until it reaches the lowest element on which the click occurred. Hey, see that E variable we're passing to our callback function? We do that because the event handler always kicks back an event object. Let's log the one in the body handler for right now. Add this line below the existing console log. Save that, refresh. Click again, there's our mouse event. If you expand that object, you will notice it has an absolute ass ton of information about the click event. Covering all of it is way outside the scope of this tutorial, but there are several pieces of information that change as the event moves through its phases. Though it should be noted, due to the way the timing works, we're always logging the completed event here, which means, for example, the event phase property is always going to be zero. We'll discuss that more when we handle the other phases. All right, so that's event capturing. We'll build off what we started here next time. See you then.